Dude and Grim Show presents The Covers Face Off. Who did it first? Who did it best? Which version is superior? The Covers Face Off. Face Off. Face Off. Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of The Covers Face Off presented by The Dude and Grim Show. We're so happy to have you back. How we doing there, Grim? You ready to ready to get hurt a little bit? Ready to get yeah. uh, get your hurt on? Yeah, yeah, I am. All right, all right. Well, uh, yes. So, ladies and gentlemen, we will doing we will be doing hurt. And to my knowledge, um, you know, written by Nine Inch Nails, covered by Johnny Cash. Are there any other versions or covers that you're are aware of? I'm sure it has been covered by other people, but I, I don't know of any that that stand out yeah nothing nothing really stands out to me and i would kind of say to anybody like good luck (laughs) right yeah i mean at this point uh, don't bother yeah yeah so i think uh yeah uh i mean you know it was written by you know trent reznor nine inch nails it was on their second album uh the downward spiral in 1994 and uh, this, um, you know, it was released as a promotional single in '95, and actually won a Grammy for best rock song in '96. So, kind of had a, kind of had a long sort of life there in in the uh, the world of I don't know popular music, sort of. Mm-hmm. Um, and not to not to say that it it you know still isn't relevant because it it, it oh, definitely no. is. It's yeah. been a, it's been a, I think it's been a staple of their live show pretty much forever. I think it's the song one song that they pretty much always play for the most part yeah and i was at a concert with stoffer um at the i was there too oh you yeah that's when you were still in gr and someone yeah, threw it someone threw the lighter at him and then he, um, he tipped over the piano and walked off and that yeah, was it yeah yeah we didn't get an encore no no <laughs> kinda, i think he was sucked. a little pissed oh man I, yeah. i'm sorry about that i for some reason i thought mm-hmm. you were you'd already went to chicago at oh, that's that all point good. yeah no, well, it's interesting because I have a, a Nine Inch Nails biography, and they actually reference that incident in the biography. Like it, you know, so it's oh, like that's, made it in there. We were yeah, at that show. Kinda, we were at that show. It's you know, I guess if you got fifteen minutes, I guess you know, I don't know that can be like thirty seconds of my fifteen minutes. I guess. <laughs> yeah. so, still waiting for my fourteen and a half more. Yeah, so. yeah that's fair. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, but no, I I do remember that, and yeah, he he was not too happy. I don't think I would be happy about that either. But, no, I I can't um, understand why you'd pay good money to come to a concert to throw something at somebody because you're a drunken asshole from Michigan. I'm from Michigan. I'm just saying, you know, there's drunken assholes everywhere, but you know, somebody just had to do it. For yeah, whatever reason. So yeah. awesome. Thanks. Um, yeah, but tell me about um, you know, this is an album that you know definitely is. You know, huge Nine Inch Nails album kind of. I mean, Pretty Hate Machine did some things, but I think this is the this one that way, took yeah. them to that that that, that next level. Yep. And Hurt was one of those songs along with Closer that that really did it. Yeah, no, uh, I would agree. I mean, that's that's uh, very much in the forefront of uh, industrial music and 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 nineties alternative rock, and and that song. I guess was kind of in my mind one of those '90s alternative rock ballads, almost ish, if that makes sure. sense. That if you could call it that, and yeah, um, yeah it, I I think when when Johnny Cash did the cover of it, I think a lot of people were quite surprised. I I wouldn't have, I guess, if you thought about songs. Uh, Johnny Cash was doing a series of albums, these American recordings that were uh, produced by Rick Rubin, and yeah. they were all very kind of uh, kind of sparse, maybe in a way. I mean, they're they're not really overproduced or anything. Johnny Cash kind of does sure. these things in his own style, but that series yeah. of albums that he did with Rick Rubin kind of. I think revitalized his career sadly right before his his death and I believe the one that the hurt cover on which is American 4 the man comes around I think was the last one he did before he died. Yeah, no I think so and, and one thing you said like you know I think 
yeah, people people would be surprised. I, I think uh, Trent Reznor must have been surprised uh, when when Johnny Cash uh, wanted to do it. I, I I think what I've seen is that he said he was flattered, but at the same time he was a little he's a little worried about it. You know, it's you know he, I don't think he wanted it to be not that Johnny Cash would do this, but he, I, I don't think he wanted it to be kind of gimmicky or anything like that. Yeah, and, and um, you know that's. I can understand that because especially not just any Nine Inch Nails song, but Hurt <laughs> comes from a very dark place and I a very a very personal place. I'm sure you would have a hard time handing, I think anyone would have a hard time handing that song over no matter who is going to take it, right? Sure. Um, but, I, you know, at the same time, I, I, can, I can certainly see and understand that. But, you know, this is coming from like a, a, an old man who who had a lot of hurt and a lot of uh, struggles in his life and kind of reflecting on that in the twilight of his life. So I think it makes sense, I guess, in that regard to me. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, that's something... Um, and we'll get into maybe the music video a little bit because it's for me, it's impossible to talk about Johnny Cash's version of the song without talking about the music video, because I I actually see them pretty much as as one. Um, but, you know, just, you know, thinking about, you know, where it came from with Trent Reznor, he was a young man. You know, I know there's, you know, there's the needle tears a hole. There's a lot of. I wouldn't. I don't even know if I say symbolism. I mean, I think that's pretty obvious. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, he was going. He, he had some challenges, some tough life things that I think he was going through uh, when he wrote the song. And Johnny Cash, I think, as kind of being an old man and looking at that song, he had, I think, a lot of the same thoughts and the same feelings and this the the same emotions, a different experience. And so it, it's really interesting to to see two different people look at that song, take that song, kind of make it their own at different points in their life and still be feeling kind of the same thing. Yeah, yeah, that is that is quite interesting. Um, but with that, I mean, I've watched the video, but from your perspective as somebody who really knows a lot about film and video and has a different eye for it than I would, I'd like to hear your take on it. Sure. Um, it's... You know, it's it's probably one of the um, most emotional videos I, I I've ever seen or, or watched, and I remember it being talked about, and I'd never seen it. And then I picked up this this box set of uh, music video directors, and it it had Mark Romanek. He's he's the one who who directed this video. And he has done, I mean, he's an amazing music video director. He did like Back Devil's Haircut. He did Nine Inch Nails Closer. Um, gosh, what else? He's he he's worked with Michael Jackson, David Bowie, uh, just tons of. I mean, the the cream of the crop. If you're a music video director, those are the people you want to be working with. You know, mm-hmm. he's worked with the Stones, everybody, and so kind of you know the story goes is he he heard this song and he said that he knew he had to direct a video for this song, like he had to do it. And he didn't know what it was going to be. It was, again, this video, I believe, was shot seven months before Johnny Cash passed away. And so they went to the the, the House of Cash. And Romanek didn't even exactly know what, what it was going to be. He was like, I, I don't know what he can do. And for the most part, if you look at the scenes where Johnny Cash is in it, I mean, he's sitting there, he's kind of at his piano, he's playing with the acoustic a little bit. Uh, there's a part where he just pours out some wine all over the table, and he's not really doing much except sitting there and kind of lip syncing, which is is understandable. And they were going through the house, and somebody was kind of giving a tour, and they said, hey, this is like the the film vault, and they're like, oh, well, that's that's interesting. And I guess they got access to the vault and a lot of footage and they were able to take that. And so when they were editing the video together, um, Romanik's editor threw in, he, you know, they put it together and it was just kind of him sitting there. And then he threw in one of the clips. And I believe it was the clip of him kind of riding on the train as sort of a, a younger man. And they immediately said that they just got goosebumps, just the way that that fit, not only with with the song, but I think it's I think it's the juxtaposition of 
seeing you have this old band and then you have clips of them when they're spry, right? And they're in their mm-hmm. youth. And yeah. it's one of those things. I, I mean, I think it was probably fairly evident and I'm sure he felt the same way after meeting him that look, the end is getting near, right? And yeah. it's what, it's one of those things they say, well, your life flashes before your eyes, you know, before you die. I mean, that whatever. So that's, that's been said. Um, and in a sense, in this video, I feel like they kind of show his life that not show just him. They show us. They show us his uh, his life flashing before I uh, our our eyes before yeah, he yeah. kind of dies. And for me, that is just it's an unbelie- uh, unbelievably emotional experience um, to do that and and to see somebody go through different stages of their life and have that fit the song. And some of the words in the song, too, is just uh, it, it's just it, you know, it brings it, it brings tears to my eyes. It's hard not to get emotional about it. It's it, it just yeah. really is. I, it's funny because after here, which I, I again, not knowing that depth, I, I want to watch it all over again now. Hmm. Well, I know you're you're a huge fan of Rick Rubin and he was interviewed of say in saying that, you know, the fact that you can take a, a, a four minute video, man, a four minute video and and you can bring the viewer to that level of emotion is pretty incredible. Yeah, it, it uh, certainly you know, is. And and other people have been interviewed, you know, Trent Reznor, he said when he first saw it, you know, he got tears in his eyes. And when he first saw the video, he felt like that that wasn't his song anymore. And uh, there's an interview with Anthony Kiedis and Anthony Kiedis was like, yeah, I saw that video and I cried and that's not an easy thing for me to do. Um, and it's, I think it affects a lot of people in a very different way. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it, to me, the song is great on its own. But when you take that song and you you put those images, there's something powerful about seeing th- the sound of the song and the way he sings it and those images that are put in front of you that um, just really evoke a, a, a deep emotional response. It, at least it does for me, and I know it does for, I think, a lot of other people too. Oh, sure. So, Yeah. Well, with that, so I, I, I'm I mean, sure it's, I'm sure it's on YouTube, so I would yeah. say check it out. Well, you know. then with that, I mean, which version do you prefer? Uh, I, to be honest, without a doubt, hands down, Johnny Cash's version. I, I and, have to agree with that. Yeah. And I can't separate the, the video out. But to be honest, even if I listen to the song to song, I might still go with Johnny Cash's version. You can hear, um, you, even if you can't see it, you can hear something in his voice. Yeah. I mean, he knows, and you know, and, and going into it, you know him as an artist and kind of as a man, like he's he's old. I mean, to me, the, the lines, the words that really stand out, what have I become? My sweetest friend, everyone I know goes away in the end. I mean, it's just like... <sighs> You know, that's looking back from his perspective, looking back on the life that yeah, he's sure. lived and and I'm sure having some regret and 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 whatnot and not sure about how much longer you have and maybe wanting to talk to some people, redo some things. And um, and it's interesting because I'm sure Trent Reznor had a very different thought and feeling even as a young man, he was, you know, he was feeling those things, but, but in a different way. And I think mm-hmm. both of the, both of them really own that, own that song in different ways. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, now that I'm officially depressed and I'm sure many of you listeners are too, go check out the video. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely not a family sing along, but if you do appreciate, you know, emotions and art and image and sound and, and how they work together, I, I don't think you can find a better example of 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 that represented out, out there. So, yeah. uh, and it's only it's only four minutes. It's not like it's a three hour Terrence Malick movie. There so, you yeah. go. All right. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, indulging us here on Hurt. Uh, we hope you invo- enjoyed another uh, covers face off. And uh, this time, Johnny Cash. Check. Try not to hurt yourself today. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's not worth it. All right. Take care, everyone. Subscribe, like, comment, do it all. Until next time. Scratch you later.
is produced by the Dude and Grim. Additional music provided by Moore, that's dot 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 M O R E, and the Tims, T I M N Z. Copyright 2020, The Dude and Grim Show. <laughs> <laughs>